Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm finally here doing that video I promised about six months ago about my top 10 herbs that I recommend for your garden. And I'm sorry that Miss Claire in the background there is insisting on being obnoxious. But it actually worked out really great. It was just a matter of time and then I kept forgetting to do it. But I was talking to Wanda the other day. We were just chatting and come to find out she was going to do a video on her top 10 herbs and so it's like hey why don't we why don't we just do a collaboration so wanda over at crazy days and deep south homestead they have two channels she has her own and then they have the one together and i will link to both of them below uh she's going to be doing a video too and uh so go watch her video because we live in very different climates even though we're in the same zone we are in completely different climates on opposite sides of the states state pretty much so when I list this off this is by no means the only herbs I grow I have many that I love and it was really hard to narrow it down to my top 10 but what I did was I went by the ones that I found to be the most useful all the way around that have more than just one use uh, so a lot of these are going to be really great for uh, pollinizer attractors. You know, they, you know, bees love them, butterflies love them, hummingbirds even may love them. Some of them are also really good for helping to prevent pests, keep pests out of the garden. And so, boy, I tell you, it's, even then, I'm still having a really hard time narrowing it down to just 10. So I'm going to have a few more I'm going to list besides the 10. And these will be in no definite order. Also keep in mind that these are going to be the herbs that do good for me in my area. So you may find herbs that have similar properties but may grow better for you in your area than they would for me and vice versa. Okay, so let's get started. So one of my very, very favorites is the marshmallow plant. And I actually, it's, it's so, so much one of my favorites that this one did have to be top of the list that I have several videos out just on marshmallow and growing it and it's such a beautiful plant and I want to say real quick some people bought some seeds from me last year the some of them are doing really well but maybe their marshmallow is only two or three feet tall that's as tall as they typically will get in the first year actually if you look up the marshmallow plant and look at these standard size it typically only gets up to five feet but mine will get as tall as 10 feet or more. They get huge now. And these are the ones that have been established for a few years. So the first year, two, first two, one to two years, maybe only two to three feet, maybe up to five, but then they could get mammoth. Most of these herbs that I'm listing off, I have videos on, not all of them, but most of them. And since I'm only allowed five I cards and then a couple of cards at the end, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link right up here to a playlist of all that has all my herb uh, videos in there. So I'm not going to list all the medicinal benefits of each of these things here. I'll list a couple, but um, it'll be too long if I go over each herb here. So just be sure to check out the playlist if one of them interests you. Look for it in there, and then you can learn a little bit more about it. Now, a couple of the reasons I want to, I do want to throw out real quick why I like the marshmallow so much is that the leaves are edible. They have a very mild flavor that goes well in salads, stir fries, just about anything. They're very soft and tactile. Uh, they have very demulcent properties, very soothing to any mucous membranes. They're good for coughs, colds, and flus and stuff like that. Uh, echinacea is another one that I have listed here. It is good for headaches, you know, aches and pains, and most of us know it's good for colds and flus. So echinacea also being just a very beautiful flower, and bees also love that. It's just rare that you can see an echinacea flower without some kind of bee on it or butterfly. Catnip is another great one that some people want think about some people may grow it just because they think it's pretty or because they have cats or whatever and they want you know they want to have catnip for their cats but catnip has a lot of great uses it makes beautiful purple flowers that the bees just adore and it is really good for a pest repellent I've used it for making my own homemade bug repellent for spraying on my plants that worked really well when they were be you know the young plants as they're growing and the bugs want to eat them all up and that really helped I mixed it with some other things and I do have a video just on that uh, some other herbs that I grow in my garden that I mixed in there and a few other 
things that seem to help all natural bug spray you can go ahead and check it out up here i believe it would work really well for spraying on your skin to prevent mosquitoes too because catnip is really good at preventing mosquitoes um comfrey is another one that i grow now i don't use it that often i have not had a lot of need for it but it is known often by another name called bone knit because it is said to actually help heal broken bones now i have used comfrey leaves as a poultice and uh, they just they have a lot of real vulnerary properties vulnerary meaning that it's a uh, very healing and soothing to the skin and marshmallow does the same thing and if i didn't mention already catnip one of the number one things i use it for actually is a headache remedy uh, so number five I have listed on here is calendula. Calendula is one of my very favorites as far as a floral herb. Uh, very, very good skin related properties. So anything that, you know, for your skin. I, that's why I like to use it in my homemade skin cream. So I like to grow lots and lots of calendula. Again, it's another great one for attracting bees. It comes in a whole lot of vibrant colors and including pink which is the new one to my garden kind of a salmon color I just love it and so that one is I've got number five number six I have listed is woolly lambs ear and I actually I do have brought some of these out here so here's what it looks like dehydrated it makes a really nice mild flavored tea that is just really beneficial to you the leaves are very soft and thick and i have also used this as a poultice or a bandage you can use it as a homemade bandage it's very thick and soft and absorbent so it can actually also be used as a replacement for toilet paper so for those who are into prepping and trying to even grow their own toilet paper lambs here is a great one it grows like crazy out here um, some places it can really just spread and take off so you have to keep an eye on it but it's also very beautiful uh, nice silvery colored leaves I love that just other type of green that it adds to the garden uh, yarrow is another one yarrow is um, another one I don't use a lot but it has so many great benefits uh, the flowers can be used in a tea that will help uh, help with sleep help you relax but it is most known for its styptic properties and styptic simply means that it helps to to stop blood flow so if you get a cut you can put some chewed up or masticated or pulverized in a mortar and pestle uh, fresh yarrow leaves in there and it will help stop the blood flow some I've heard some people say it just immediately good a sharp cut that was just bleeding like crazy put the yarrow on there and immediately it stops the bleeding and so that's one of the many many uses and again I have I do have a video on this one okay borage is another one I love to grow. Uh, it is the bee's very favorite is the borage with its purple and blue flowers, mostly blue, but you'll see a lot of purple, even pink flowers in there. And the whole plant is edible. It is uh, known as an adaptogen, which helps the body adjust to stress. I use the leaves, I dehydrate the leaves up and put them in my mixed greens blend all throughout the year. The young leaves I'll use in salads or even just chew on fresh out of the garden. The, the flowers are really beautiful in salad as well. It's also good for the skin, so I'll even use it in my homemade soaps and stuff like that. Nasturtiums. Oh my goodness, nasturtiums. If you're not growing nasturtiums and you can grow nasturtiums, you really need to. This is one of the most recent videos I did on nasturtium, the leaves and the flowers. I have here a jar. This is from this year. I have a whole bunch of jars of uh, dehydrated flowers, but uh, it, you can put quite a few dehydrated flowers in there. And right here I have an almost, almost full quart jar of uh, the leaves. I'm hoping to have it full before the end of the year and the distortions are completely gone. Because of its antibiotic properties, it is a really great antibiotic. We've used it. It's worked for us. And you know, the whole plant, again, is edible and just tastes wonderful. I love the flavor. The seeds are very hot and spicy and uh, the flowers have both a sweet yet kind of radish flavor to them which makes them also go very well in salads or using uh, just as a snack you can put a you, you can make some kind of tuna or whatever sort of salad or even chicken and stuff the flowers and oh so good 
So nasturtiums, highly recommended. Feverfew, I didn't bring any a jar of Feverfew out here, but Feverfew isn't one that I use a lot, uh, but it's also really great for headaches. It's very bitter, has a very strong flavor. I don't prefer the flavor, but I will put up with it if I have a headache I'm really trying to get rid of. I usually will take a, a sprig of if it's if it's fresh at the time catnip and a sprig of feverfew and chew on them both and it usually within 20 minutes my headache is gone i've also tinctured the two together along with marshmallow because marshmallow and echinacea both have a uh, pain remedy to them and um usually if your your herb is going to be good for as an analgesic which is you know helping to relieve pain it is also good for an anti-inflammatory you'll find that it's often those two will go hand in hand that right there makes 10 herbs now i want to mention a few others that um i maybe i should put honorable mention and that is pansies i love pansies because they're beautiful they also have a lot of great vulnerary properties they're also very soothing like the marshmallow and then mints is the other one that i really wanted in my top 10 it was just a it was really a tough one it pretty much anyone can grow mints uh, you'd probably have to live in the middle of a desert to not be able to grow mints because they grow like a weed they will spread like crazy but they have so many great properties uh, they do help repel certain pests out of the garden as well as especially like you can grow your mints around the peripheral of your garden which is what i'm starting to do is move them out to the peripheral uh, but it was one of the first herbs that i started to grow because i love mint tea and fresh mint any kind of mint really but peppermint and mojito mint are my two favorites but the uh one of the before i started going completely off of all pharmaceuticals whether it be prescription medication like our thyroid medi medicine or over the counter like pain remedies the other one of the other big ones i would tend to take was anything to help soothe my stomach because I used to have a lot of a lot of stomach pain a lot of issues there especially when I'd get stressed out and what I found is I could go out when I start growing the peppermint and just chew on some peppermint and it took care of the stomach pain just like that and it was gone so really like the the mints for that so that's kind of in the honorable mention I guess but I really would like it to be in my top 10 but I can only have 10 in the top 10 <laughs> And then a few others I didn't mention also because these are ones that you don't have to think so much to grow because most people will find them growing wild somewhere on their property. And that is dandelion, plantain, and pineapple weed. And I do have videos on the dandelion and the uh, pineapple weed. I don't have any on the plantain yet, but I've mentioned it several times. Plantain is very good for soothing skin issues. I once got stung by a, a yellow jacket when I was out in the garden. First time I've ever been stung by any kind of wasp that I can recall. And I happened to be out there in the garden and I, I was thinking, what was it? I know I'm growing right here. And I and I, I saw the plantain. I'm like, that's it. Chewed it up. Put it on the, on the wasp sting. And within two minutes, not only was the pain completely gone, uh, it didn't even leave a mark. I was just amazed that that happened. I mean, because uh, in the time it took for me to grit, get the plantain and chew it up, I could feel the pain getting worse and worse and worse. Put that on there, immediately the pain started to go away just as quick as I could put it on there to the point that, like I said, two minutes, it was gone and not even a mark was left. You wouldn't even know I'd been stung. No swelling or or whatever so plantain is an excellent one to look for to forage for in your own property most likely is growing it tends to like it will grow in gravel it'll grow in grass it grows anywhere same with the pineapple weed okay well i hope you enjoyed this video and that this will give you some ideas for your 2019 medicinal herb garden and again go check out my link for my uh, playlist on medicinal herbs and any ones that i don't already have videos out on yet i do plan on doing videos on in the future so be watching for those and also don't forget to go check out wanda at crazy days and at deep south homestead with her video on her top 10 medicinal herbs okay well i hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new thanks for watching take care and God bless.